Hi, this is Scotty. Sorry about the interruption in part one. The alarm went off on my phone. It happened. So this is part two of common themes that run through the scriptures of Romans. Unshakable is God's love. Romans refers to God's unshakable love. Nothing, whether it is, whether you are dead, alive, spiritual forces, or any other creature or thing can separate you from Jesus Christ's love. That's a goal to shoot for. Forgive people for your own inner core, as well as building a relationship with others if you can. If the person is dead, pray to the Lord and pray that that person, for, that you are forgiving them for their sins. Now, this is not to get at the other person. This is to release the sin in the world. And you set up roadblocks for when or if they start this bad behavior towards you again. You just tell them to stop. That that is not acceptable. You put your foot down. And if the person persists, you may have to leave that person from your life. But that's okay. Okay, I also mentioned, this is where we got interrupted, the foundations of Christian faith. The, go the Gospels of Roman was no, neither the grip of sin, nor death, nor other ent entities in the heavens or hell or the earth can keep God away from you. God is your savior. God is your anchor. God is your base. In the Christian format, it is Jesus. And I claim Jesus as my anchor. It is unshakable. It has given me freedom from the doubts, the hate, the... Imagine for a moment... Just being called fatso from the age of six to the age of 20. And all that hate, all that anger, all that put down from your parents, from your family, from kids at school, you name it, it's there. Your self-esteem is like, Ew. and pardon my language. Fuck it, I said one day. I am no longer putting up with this behavior. My mother started calling me fatso. And my brother started calling me fatso. He was a very thin and tall guy at the time. And I said, I told him to stop it. I told him never to do that again. And my I looked at my brother and I said, I know things about you that you don't want mom to know. And if you say what one more time, I will tell her. And I looked at my mom and I said, no more. I am never going to diet again. I don't care what you say or what you try to contrive. I'm done. That is me standing up to my abusers and saying, stop. Not acceptable. Not going to hear it anymore. Done. And that was in the, when I was in my 20s. And now I'm in my 60s. And I have not done a diet again. I'm getting off the topic. Life transformations. The freedom from guilt and compulsions. Like Alice Cooper was addicted to cocaine, and once he was born again, that compulsion went away. Romans eight says that that there is no compulsion for those who are in Christ. You do not. Sorry about that. Feel committed to do compulsions. You're you're over it, or you're working towards it. 
and both are acceptable. If you've been struggling with guilt, shame, a sense of unworthiness, okay. Being called fatso, being called stupid, being called you should never have been born. It's this kind of crap that I'm talking about. Worthless. Guilty. Shame. You aren't smart enough. You are stupid. You you don't know your left from your right. You you are ugh, ridiculous. Like Harry Potter says to that critter. Ridiculous. And then it becomes funny. You have to let go of all that shit. All that pain. All that frustration. And you have to forgive the people who did this to you. And you also have to tell them no more. Absolutely no more. It's unacceptable behavior. You say that to them. And every time they start saying something like that, you tell them it's unacceptable behavior. I will not accept it anymore. It's amazing how well that works. Like when people start escalating to start shouting, I will yell at someone and say, stop yelling. It's against the rules in my house. It's amazing how well that works. These verses remind us through Jesus, you are forgiven you are in grace, and God covers all sins. Now, the world here might require that you go to jail, or pay a fine, or forgive people. Fair enough. But God has forgiven you. Jesus has forgiven you. You have peace in your heart. Because you've dealt with the guilt. You've dealt with the shame. You deal with the worthlessness. Work with God to get there. To confront it. To say, hello, pain. You're a bunch of garbage. Go away. I no longer accept the judgment of my peers, my friends. The abuse of my childhood. Whatever it is. It's gone. You remember it. But that pain that was weighting you down to the point you want to commit. Suicide. It's like having one big fat boil. Sitting on your arm. And you pop it. By forgiving. Yeah, the, you're going to get a bunch of goo coming out. It's kind of gross. And you got to put a band, clean it and sterilize it and put a band-aid on it. But you feel better when it's popped. Or you get a zit on your face and you pop it. And it shoots across the room and you're embarrassed. But once that thing is popped, the stress on your skin is gone and you feel better. That's freedom of guilt. That's freedom from compulsion. That's Jesus and God working with you and in you. And you facing your troubles and say, I forgive you. No more. Like Doctor Who did back in the day. No more. No more. A new life through the Spirit. As we were speaking, Surrender to the Holy Spirit. Okay. Holy Spirit. There's a little bit of God inside you. I think it's in the pentil gland. That's where I think it is. But that's personal opinion. That's where your chakra, your third eye is. That's where the Holy Spirit is in you. The part of God that's in you. Maybe the God is like. A very large creature that has many, 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 many cells working together. And in each cell, there is a part of the bigger entity. So, yeah, you're part of God. There's part of God in you. You are part of God. But 
but we're all part of God. And we are in him and he is in us. So yeah, we surrender to the Holy Spirit. We accept the Holy Spirit in us. Or if you have some other faith, being one with your God, however that is defined. We find new power in living righteously. Okay, that's a dangerous word. It's not what other people do. If you think they're unrighteous, don't go there. Don't judge them. You judge yourself. Are you being righteous? Are you being at peace with the Lord? Are you living according to the standards that you wish to live by? Are you hurting? Are you killing? Are you maiming? Are you robbing? Are you stealing? Are you putting people down? Are you hurting people? Are you living in love? If you see an injustice, do you point it out? Are you living at peace with God? It's righteousness. Don't condemn others. If you see harm, bring it to someone's attention. Struggling with sins do not define us. We are not our sins. We are not the guilt trip that our parents, teachers, psychobabbles have put on us. We are the whole, we are part of the Holy Spirit. That is forgiving ourselves for the sin or redefining the sin as someone else's as of why is being overweight a sin? Do I find it sinful? No. But my mother, my grandmother, my great-grandmother, you go five generations back on my maternal line. Every mother called her daughter fat, and every one of their daughters got fat. I don't know if it was because of the, the stress of calling them fat, But I forgave my mother and told her not to do it anymore. Whenever she brought it up, I said, nope, not acceptable. And I did not pass that down to my daughter. I didn't. And she hasn't passed it down either. So maybe we've broken a cycle of abuse. Maybe you cannot change the past and what was done to you. But you can change what you do to your children and how you treat your parents. That you can change. Or your grandkids if you're so fortunate. Because the spirit of life in Christ strengthens us to live a purpose-filled purpose and holistic life. To walk and live in love rather than hate. Actually, that can be harder than you think. You can point out injustice. You can point out problems. You can suggest solutions. You can encourage someone. But the only person you can change is yourself. Not your spouse, not your children. They have to deal with their own demons, ridicule, put-downs, guilt, and forgiveness themselves. Unbreakable love. Romans 8, uh, 38 and 39. Sorry about that. Assures us that there is nothing could be separate us from God's love. This is critical in the world full of uncertainty and fear. No matter what the challenge you have to face, whether it is a hardship, a spiritual battle like I had, personal failures, that was me, hardships, 
dyslexia and being fat? Yeah, those were hardships. You are secure in God's love. So, you have, have a cocaine addiction. You get off, you get straight, and you have a relapse. God still loves you. He wants you to get better. You have to pick up, pull yourself up by your bootstraps and hold it on to God with the other hand and move on. Don't let it keep you down. Go back into rehab. Struggle with it again. Go to AA meetings. Whatever you need to do. And always pray to the Lord. Always pray to God. These verses can change lives by freedom, you from the cycle of sin, giving you peace that surpasses all understanding, grounding you in the assurance that you are always loved by God, by Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, the three in one. Embrace the truth, the allow the Spirit of Christ to guide you every step of your life victory peace and love okay a parent loves a child unconditionally whether they're a drug addict out on the street they're afraid of them whatever their problem is most parents love their child regardless we try to guide them. We try to encourage them. We say, okay, think about that a minute. What are the consequences? Do you really want to do this? Is this positive? Is it a negative? Discuss it with the child and get them to think it through. That was the parenting style I got from my mom. And that is the parenting style I have passed down to my grandson. So thank you for listening to part two. Um, God bless you. God loves you. And write down on a piece of paper either the category or the person of people, who they are, and what offenses they've done to you. Like in my case, it was kids in elementary school and high school calling me fat so that was that was my category and my hate of them for doing that i had to forgive them all and in my senior senior class i did apologize to them which rather shook up the class that day and i forgave them so that weight was lifted off of me my mother call me fat so well i forgave her but told her no more we're done that's it you can't talk on that subject anymore in my presence and i stated i'm not gonna diet anymore i don't care what you say i'm done that was standing up that was Putting a wall of what is acceptable or not acceptable. Protect. And tell them. No. No more. <sighs> a doctor who is coming back in my head. No more. No more. No more. Forgive yourself, Doctor Who. Let go of the pain. Let go of the anger. Let go of centuries of abuse and murder and death and things you had to do to protect people. Let it go. And you know what? In, on the Disney Channel in this last season... He let it go. He divided himself. 
And even the self that had all that pain and anger, he forgave himself. And Doctor Who is back to the fun-loving adventurer he was back in 1963 when I was two years old. Whoa. Okay. See, God even works through television. Who would have guessed? Or Cars Movie 1. He was so egotistical and had no friends. He was famous, but he had no life. But when they met the towns of Radiator Springs, they said, Stop it. Be our friend. You have to stand up for what you believe in and stop being an ass. And then that one week, he learned that. And then he was pulled away, thrown into the racetrack. But his friends from Radiator Springs came and said, Hey, you're our friend. We love you. And he went from a self-centered idiot to a dear and loving friend. All right. I think we've talked enough on this topic through two different videos. I hope you enjoy them. Please like and subscribe. <sighs> In Jesus' name, God bless you. This is Scotty. Bye.